Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. The picture of the formation, evolution, and death of stars is changing with each new discovery. The Electric Universe theory has offered predictions for stellar phenomena that have proved far more successful than those of gravity-centric cosmology. Stars do not form in a process of gravitational collapse, but rather they form from the electromagnetic pinch effect along vast filaments of remarkably constant width. Stars are not powered by internal thermonuclear reactions. Rather, the Sun is a positively charged electrode at the focus of incoming electrical currents. Stars do not collapse and explode when they quote, burn up their nuclear fuel. Rather, electric stars have internal charge separation and can relieve electrical stress by fissioning or blowing off charged matter. In fact, the standard theory of a supernova, which has never been shown to work experimentally, has grown more severely challenged with each new discovery. In November of 2017, a paper published in the journal Nature reported the observation of a star that exploded, somehow survived, then exploded again more than half a century later. A Phys.org report describes the discovery as follows. The finding, published by Nature, completely confounds existing knowledge of a star's end of life. Somehow, this star exploded more than half a century ago, survived, and exploded again in 2014. A co-author of the paper stated, This supernova breaks everything we thought we knew about how they work. In part one of this three-part presentation, the chief science advisor to the Thunderbolts project, physicist Wal Thornhill, will begin our discussion on the nature of stars with an examination of so-called neutron stars, hypothetical entities which were invented in the 1960s after the unexpected discovery of pulsing electromagnetic emissions in space. But as Thornhill explains, like the standard theory of supernovas, the hypothetical neutron star is a questionable proposition at best. It was argued in a recent Space News that bizarre whirling neutron star lighthouses are not needed to produce rapidly flashing pulsar signals. Conventionally, neutron stars are believed to be the remnants of a supernova explosion. But supernova explosions are said to be not fully understood, which means keep sending money. So exploding stars are a good place to begin exploding theories. Neutrons are only seen to exist outside an atomic nucleus for a few minutes before they separate into an electron and a proton. So we can't just assume they can be packed closely together to form the bulk of a stable star. Insisting that neutrons exist in atomic nuclei forces an unconvincing nuclear model upon us, with positive charges held together by an ad hoc strong nuclear force. There appears to be very strong statistical evidence that an atomic nucleus is made up of protons in a rapidly revolving geometric structure where electrons are in sufficient numbers to occupy on average the midpoint between pairs of protons. The attractive force to the closer electron overcomes the powerful repulsive electric force between pairs of protons. This greatly simplifies many subjects in atomic and nuclear physics. So we can forget neutron stars they don't exist. It's far simpler and more likely to suggest that a normal stellar body subjected to abnormally high electrical stress is the source of the steady flashing signals from pulsars. The disturbing fact is that plasma physicists have shown this both theoretically and experimentally. The electrical model of stars is real evidence-based science. Further support for the electrical model recently came from the discovery of gamma ray flares coming from the Crab Nebula which encloses a pulsating supernova remnant only six and a half thousand light years away in the constellation Taurus. In Physical Review letters of November the 24th, there appeared a letter titled Inductive Spikes in the Crab Nebula, a Theory of Gamma Ray Flares by John Kirk and Gwenael Giacinti. They report, The detection of powerful gamma ray flares from the Crab Nebula by the Agile satellite and the Large Area Telescope on the Fermi satellite has provided theorists with three major puzzles. How are particles able to emit synchrotron radiation well above the 100 mega electron volts astrophysical upper limit? What is the geometry and location of the source, given that it varies on a time scale of hours, whereas the nebula has a light crossing time of months? 
By which mechanism can such a small source achieve a power of only one order of magnitude less than that of the entire nebula? On November 27th it was reported in more popular fashion in the New Scientist under the banner Mysterious Gamma Rays in Crab Nebula Traced to Pulsar Winds. It says, and I quote, Waves of charged particles slamming into gas and dust may be responsible for unexpected super bright flashes in the Crab Nebula. In 2011, two telescopes observed unusual short-lived gamma ray bursts in the Crab. These exceeded 100 mega electron volts, hundreds of times brighter than the nebula's normal emissions. The source of the flashes was a mystery. Some suspected it had to do with the pulsar's magnetic fields splitting or becoming knotted as they move away from the star and into surrounding material. Now, new research pins the gamma ray emissions on charged particles like electrons and positrons that flow from the neutron star at near light speed, like a constant breeze. Here we see the blind spot of astrophysicists toward electrical effects in space. They can't see beyond explosive winds slamming into slow-moving matter and mysterious magnetic fields which are tied in knots and magically cut and reconnected to somehow produce what are clearly electrical effects. What we are not told is that physicists in the 21st century have no physical understanding of the magnetic force, just equations. Magnetic field lines are a graphic representation and not a real thing. Magnetic field lines must always terminate at a magnetic pole. They cannot be disconnected and reconnected in empty space. The only electrical reference in the report is to the gamma ray energy measured in excess of 100 MeV. This voltage is easily exceeded across a cosmic plasma double layer, which form in a Birkeland current in a stellar or galactic circuit. But astrophysicists don't do circuits in space because they are taught electricity doesn't do anything in space. Back in 1986, the pioneering Nobel Prize winning plasma cosmologist Hans Alfane said, Double layers in space should be classified as a new type of celestial object. It's tentatively suggested that X-ray and gamma-ray bursts may be due to exploding double layers. In solar flares, double layers with voltages of 10 billion volts or even more may occur. And in galactic phenomena, we may have voltages that are several orders of magnitude larger. Alphane was right. It is the simple mechanism behind all of the mysterious gamma-ray bursts in deep space. He explains further, If the current density is too high an exploding double layer may be formed. This means that in the plasma a region of high vacuum is produced. The plasma refuses to carry any current at all. At the sudden interruption of the circuit, inductance produces enormous overvoltages which may be destructive. The result is a high energy flash of X-rays, gamma rays and cosmic rays. Here we see the dramatic release when a circuit breaker opens of the electromagnetic energy stored in a long distance 500,000 volt transmission line. A voltage pulse across the opening circuit breaker rises to millions of volts causing a powerful arc several meters long. That same voltage pulse in the stellar circuit accelerates charged particles to energies capable of generating the observed gamma ray flashes. It shows how a small source can achieve a power only one order of magnitude less than that of the entire nebula. The astrophysicist's conceptual blind spot is evident when we look at the explanation for the gamma ray flashes offered by scientists, where they actually describe the exploding double layer effect without recognizing the electrical cause. New research pins the gamma ray emissions on charged particles like electrons and positrons that flow from the neutron star at near light speed, like a constant breeze. We propose that at some moments you have pockets inside this wind where the density of electrons and positrons drops, says Gwenael Giacinti at the Max Planck Institute for Nuclear Physics in Heidelberg, Germany. Lines of electromagnetic force usually maintain a constant current. When they encounter these lower density pockets, that current is disrupted. Some of the energy in the particles gets converted into kinetic energy, causing the electrons and positrons to accelerate and smash into the nebula's gas and dust. The effect is similar to the behavior of a circuit containing an inductor, should the current in the circuit suddenly drop, the inductor, which acts to smooth out the electric current, will try to rapidly counteract the loss with a huge pulse, often resulting in a spark. The effect is not similar, it is precisely that of an exploding double layer. As for the wind with its pockets and lines of electromagnetic force maintaining a constant current, 
The concepts are adrift from any real physical model involving electricity supplied by a galactic circuit. Instead, the Crab Nebula is treated as an isolated, closed system, so the descriptive words are either misleading or meaningless. Of course, there's no reference in the paper to Hans Alfain and his 31-year-old explanation for high-energy gamma-ray bursts based on the tried and tested physics of electrified plasma. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.